In chapter 4 of my Deserts of India series, we took to the skies and explored some of the many avian life forms that the little run of Kutch is home to. We also revisited the two pregnant desert foxes and gave them names based on their characteristics and personalities. In this chapter, the seasons have changed. As winter slowly comes to an end, I'm not only going to visit more den sites, but I'm also going to bring you an entirely different species of fox. as well as their little ones and i'm going to be filming it all on the canon r6 i'll show you the mistakes i made the different strategies that i used and how i captured precious moments after dark when the human eye struggles to see stay tuned for the children of spring and the many stories behind them Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is chapter 5. The second last installment of my Deserts of India series happening entirely in the little run of Kutch. It's nearly the middle of Feb and it's the onset of spring in India. This season of new beginnings will also birth the next generation of foxes. Time passes by really fast when you're doing something you love. But then again, it passes by ever so slowly when you're looking forward to being somewhere. If you haven't watched the previous chapters, I recommend watching them before continuing this one. During my third trip to the little run of Kutch, I gathered news of an Indian fox den that was en route. What made this den special was that it was housing 5 puppies. A local guide took me there. I didn't have access to the Canon R6 for day 1, so the 5D would have to do the job. The mother of these pups has divided the litter into two dens. I am an hour away from uh, the little run of Kutch and I've stopped uh, over here because there are Indian fox puppies. One den has two pups and the other has three. Most foxes have more than one den and they'll shuffle their litter if disturbed. said the den that has two pups and they they keep jumping around playing <laughs> and they just so adorable it was almost noon and it was blisteringly hot you can see the hot atmosphere distorting the optical image it's taken me 3 attempts of getting here to get foxes i initially came here in november to get a meeting but i didn't get that because the foxes were just too shy trip i saw two pregnant females uh, they were both desert foxes and these little guys are indian foxes just getting outside that day and exploring the real world <laughs> it's 
It's so amazing to see this. And I'm shooting the behind the scenes as well as filming them at the same time. We tend to think that boredom is a human trait. When these pups were bored of being inside, they were back outside. And vice versa. All young ones have a shifting attention. Doing one thing and then doing another. There are three pups in this den and not two. The third pup seemed to have sustained a head injury. Its head was tilted and it kept moving around in circles. Due to several reasons, both natural and unnatural, mortality is high in the initial months. I took a few stills, but the heat distortion ruined all my shots. Every single one of them turned out blurry. I always avoid shooting in harsh light, but this was my first time with fox pups. Under these passing buffaloes is the other den with two pups. And this is their dad watching over them. As evening came by, the lighting was much softer and there was no more heat distortion in my image. Most of the pup's time was spent exploring, frolicking or just being lazy. Birds passing by would engage their predatory instinct. The pups have new neighbors nearby. Off the side of the road was this miniature marsh. There's something hiding within these reeds. This is Balin's Creek a migratory bird from Eurasia. It has to hide between feeding or it could be eaten by raptors that have also migrated. A spotted crick shares this little marsh as well.
together the creeks have many visitors such as this blue throat Day 1 of my third trip was fruitful. It was time to head over to Run Riders, transfer all the data and get a good night's rest. The early morning drives were beginning to feel different. They weren't as chilly as they used to be. The den that I was visiting this morning also has Indian foxes. It's almost 30 kilometers outside the little run of Kutch and it's nestled in the middle of private farmland. This meant that I had exclusive photographic access. I didn't know how many pups this litter has, but I did know that the parents have dug two dens here as well. We reached the location much ahead of time. It was still blue hour and the sun had plenty of time. to rise meanwhile there was a recognizable call piercing through the sky and it kept getting louder hundreds of cranes appeared from the horizon those hundreds became thousands the cranes were moving from their roosting grounds to their feeding grounds such an incredible way to start day 2 we continued to look out for activity This time I had the Canon R6 thanks to Soar excursions. Right beside this thorny nightshade plant is where the den is. At ground level the den is completely hidden from sight. This is indeed a pretty location to have a home. I kept my camera on throughout most of my waiting time because you can't tell when there's going to be activity. You've just got to be ready if you don't want to miss a moment. After having no activity there, I went to inspect the other den site. from that den site and I've come to this den site and I've been laying down here for at least an hour and a half and I was hoping to get some activity in the morning's uh, golden hour but that didn't happen and there was activity here last evening that's what one of the guides uh, saw and i'm hoping they don't come out too late that's if they come out because uh, from this low angle that i'm shooting i'm going to get those heat waves again These buffaloes and a farmer were the only activity I had apart from the birds.
the herd walked right over the den. In a few minutes, they were gone in search of grazing pastures. To give you a better understanding of what this den looks like, I have to take you into the sky once again. This den is ingeniously designed. It has seven intricate entrances. Building a den on agricultural land offers these foxes some form of security from other competitive carnivores like hyenas and jackals that are most likely to avoid human contact. By 10 a.m., the sun was scorching hot. We were on our way back to the resort and we decided to take a different route. In the previous chapter, I showed you how irrigation water coming from the Narmada River overflows inside the run. It overflows here as well, turning the dry mud road into a water-saturated slush. Our safari vehicle barely made it through the first patch without engaging the 4x4. It was the second patch which was more of a struggle, even with the 4x4 engaged. In spite of several attempts, the car didn't budge, and it only sank deeper. The same familiar noise from dawn was heard once more. The cranes were now returning from their feeding ground back to their roosting ground. A great sight to enjoy until help arrived. In seconds, our vehicle was pulled out from the mud. We continue to see more cranes on our way back to the resort. Tens of thousands of them migrate to Gujarat every winter from northern parts of Europe and Siberia. Adventure doesn't get better than this. In the evening, we went back to the same fox den. This time, I had to change my strategy. The open field would have me in plain sight. I didn't have a camouflage suit, nor did I have a hide to shoot from. 
but i was still a little hopeful before i could even reach the den one puppy was already outside it appeared to be much younger than the litter i photographed the day before as always i took my first shot from a distance a harrier scanning for prey from above sent the puppy back into hiding this was my chance to move in closer i set up my gear under a nearby tree and just waited there my camera was on a slight incline whilst i laid on the declining slope to the right this position visually concealed most of me and i wouldn't be seen as a large intruder about half an hour later this happened the puppies are out and they're smaller than the ones i saw yesterday three pups emerged from the den is so tiny probably just a few weeks old looking at how young they all are i can tell you that they have only just begun exploring the world outside the underground so small oh my gosh the sights the sounds and smells must all be so fascinating <laughs> there are cranes flying on top and they got scared of them and they ran back inside their den <laughs> with a sharp sense of hearing their heads always turned towards the bird song when the sounds got too close for comfort it was back to the basement for safety a short while later they were on the surface again it truly is a different realm up here especially when you haven't seen it for half your life Although the pups have probably gotten used to it they seem to have not gotten enough of it Some cranes flew right above us and the pups could hear their calls. They just couldn't pinpoint where the sound was coming from. Challenging when the source of that sound moves through space. They finally spotted the cranes. Pet dogs at this age are very dependent. They lack survival instinct and are used to a life of pampering. These fox pups however are already displaying hardwired instincts. Well, at least this little fella at the back. He humps his siblings to show off his dominance. Something I'm not sure he's able to comprehend. but he's evidently programmed to do so
these scattered feathers near the den were most likely from the previous night's kill. The mother has to eat well in order to produce milk for three fast-growing children. Even though they might have developed a taste for meat, it's her milk that will provide the necessary nourishment and growth hormones they need. The sun was fast setting and I couldn't get a glimpse of either parent. Simply having shots of the pups wasn't enough. I wanted to capture precious moments of the entire leash together. But both mother and father were probably still out hunting or scavenging. I waited in the car and observed the den for activity as night came on. I noticed something moving in my peripheral vision. A striped hyena was patrolling by in search of food. It was so dark that I had to increase my ISO to over 25,000 to be able to film it. Again, all of this is happening on agricultural land, 30 kilometers outside the protected wildlife sanctuary. This not only reveals the fox's natural competition for resources, but it also reveals how wild spaces are shrinking. Factory lights shimmering in the background are an inconvenient reminder of habitat loss. My agenda for today was a little different. I wanted to capture moments of the pups with their parents. Especially the mother nursing and playing with them. I wanted to see them in their most natural self possible. A lone Neil guy was my first sighting for the day. We are beginning to see just how much diversity exists outside protected areas. The cranes were heading to their feeding grounds once more. My guide Samath dropped me to the spot and backed up the car. This way we would be least intrusive. I chose a different shrub to shoot besides. The foxes would now see even lesser of me and I would get a fresh angle. Almost four hours had passed. There was no sign of the foxes. The same farmer was back, taking his buffaloes for their routine grazing. I was just hoping that they didn't come near the den. This one did, but thankfully it wasn't interested in eating the thorny nightshade.
like the leaves on the trees Let me fly like the leaves when they fall Well, let my mind go serene Like a cool water stream That runs from the mountain so tall Oh, take me back down the old dirt road Back at Run Riders, Samath was building a hide for me to shoot from. We used strips of bamboo and a gunny sack. Materials that these particular foxes would be used to sing as they've spent their entire life in and around agricultural land. Soon after lunch, the framework of our hide was ready. Well, take me home. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the Indian version of two and a half men with an open top four by four and a not so suspicious item in the back. Well, let the pull of the plow bring the sweat from my brow and the glow of the fire pull me home. The hide was slowly coming to life. This is how I'd enter and this cut out is where I'd shoot from. Our zero budget fox hide was all set up. It's possibly the smallest outdoor office cubicle in the world and it's stunningly well ventilated. The objective of this hide was to conceal my human form completely so the foxes don't feel my presence and they carry out their normal behavior. I wanted to capture them doing their own thing as opposed to knowing that I'm there and occasionally looking into my camera. Maybe now that I was visually hidden, the adult foxes would arrive earlier. Unfortunately, it was a Saturday afternoon and some kids in a nearby field were playing cricket. The commotion from the game could be heard all the way here. I've been inside this hide for at least an hour and a half and there's been no activity at all. Neither in the morning nor right now in the evening. There's just a few birds that keep coming. And the sun is setting pretty quick. A short while after, the vixen arrived and she was looking directly at me. Not only was she suspicious of this new foreign structure, but she could tell that there was somebody inside. Foxes are far more sharper and intelligent than we assume them to be. The pups may have let me shoot them because they're too young to know that man is a potential threat. The adult foxes, however, would have likely encountered stone pelters, people trying to shoo them away, or could have even been trapped in a snare that was meant to stop herbivores from raiding farmers' crops. Her hesitation of approaching the den was justified. I was just trying to be as motionless as possible and let her know that I wasn't a threat. Staying in clear sight didn't work out and my strategy of concealing myself had also failed. Maybe if I left the hide here the entire night, the foxes would get used to it. I decided not to go to the Indian fox den in the morning. Rather, give the adult foxes some more time to get used to the hide. The agenda for the first half of the day was to look out 
for more desert foxes inside the run. There hasn't been much activity in the morning really for the Indian foxes. And I assume that's going to be the same with the desert fox as well. So let's see how the morning goes. After what felt like the longest dawn, Samath happened to spot a new den site and he went on to inspect it for activity. This is what happens when you don't get enough sleep. <coughs> Can't open doors properly and you bang your head on everything. Unfortunately, there were no fresh paw prints. And that could only mean that this den was abandoned. We had to get back in the car and continue our lookout. As the landscape began soaking in the golden morning sunlight, we found one more den. Just like Secret, this fox has also built her den under tree cover. Not only do the trees provide additional shelter, but their roots also ensure longevity of the den. There were no fox sightings and we moved on to see whatever else we could capture nearby. And somewhere under those trees is yet another desert fox den. And here's proof that it's still active. Examining droppings like these is a non-intrusive way of understanding a fox's diet. Traces of fruits, insects, mammals, birds, reptiles and even domestic animals can be found. The desert is an incredibly hostile place to live in. To survive here, you have to be an opportunist. The light eventually turned harsh and it was time to head back to the resort and recharge for the evening session with the Indian Fox. As we approached the field, we noticed that the hide had fallen over because of the breeze. We turned it upright and I got into it as quickly and silently as possible. The view from inside is very restricted. I can only see um, the den and the, the close area surrounding it. But I can't really see far away. An hour had passed 
and there was nothing so the female didn't uh, show up but um i managed to find a kill of hers that she made last night i'll show you the feathers right now right there this must have been about 15 20 feet from where i set up the hide so she's not really scared of the hide it's common knowledge that foxes are nocturnal so maybe if i waited silently in the car i could observe their activity and behavior after dark both parents arrived together the foxes were passing the exact same path that the hyena walked on two nights before at over 25000 iso the dual pixel autofocus tracking of the canon r6 wouldn't even come close to working condition so manual focus it was dropping my shutter speed as low as 1/4 of a second help the camera sensor take in more light a trade off for sharp motion picture but it was the story that was more important turning on our low beam headlights for a short period was the only way to observe those precious family moments The pups were thrilled to see their parents return. Just like human children, these pups also displayed a very playful, carefree nature. Whilst the parents were mildly wary of me, I had to stay put and let them know yet again that I was not a threat. Frolicking was more important. And shortly after, the mother nursed the young ones. I decided to call her Nightshade, not only because of the thorny nightshade plant above her den, but also because of her more comfortable nature after dark. seeing a leash of five foxes together and witnessing family bonds in the wild were an indescribable feeling it's beautiful what lays beneath the stars This was the last day of my third trip. I was so focused on the Indian foxes that I spent only one morning inside the run. I decided to visit Emily again. She was pregnant the last time I came, but maybe now I could get a glimpse of her young ones. The entrance of the sanctuary that leads to Emily's den has been taken over by salt and chemical industries. The natural landscape has been transformed by them. My strategy was to film from the vehicle itself. Because the den was slightly elevated, the height of the car wouldn't be a problem. The waiting game began as always. It's gotten super dull and gloomy and windy and it sounds exactly like the wind that you hear in all of the western movies. All of that howling breeze blowing through the desert very aggressively. Still no sign of the fox. 
a desert wheat ear sat next to the den. Soon after its calls, Emily came outside. The wind was pushing the bird song in her direction. With super hearing, it could sound like the bird was right beside her. She is not as shy as the Indian fox. And she looks so gorgeous. Wow. Her abdomen was visibly shrunken and her teats have become prominent. Emily has given birth. As she is about to enter her den, other sounds have caught her attention. She is unsure if she should go in or wait outside. She strays away for a short while and then returns. For some reason, she was constantly looking behind the den. Part of me was hoping that her absence inside would encourage the pups to come outside. but that would only happen if they were old enough. Fox pups are blind at birth and they spend the first couple of weeks inside the den until they are physically able to explore beyond it. Trash blown in the wind has accumulated in the dry seep weeds outside her den. Emily came out once more. She is probably hungry and waiting for her mate to return with food. It's likely that she hasn't eaten because there were no signs of a kill outside the den. The survival of her pups depends on her ability to produce milk. After she finally retired to her den, we inspected the mud surrounding the entrance for tiny paw prints. The absence of them confirmed that the pups were still too young to venture outside. But what we did find were these little shells, leftover marine life from when the Arabian Sea drowns the little run of kutch every monsoon. The evening's plan was to visit Nightshade's den again. I developed an attachment towards her and her offspring and I wanted to spend more time with them if they were kind enough to let me. Unlike Secret's Den, which is covered under protective trees, Nightshade's Den is completely exposed. As soon as I arrived, I spotted a pair of harriers circling the den. I thought we were going to lose a fox pup to the birds of prey. And I kid you not, my heart was pounding. I was far from the den and I didn't approach it because you can't interfere with natural order. 
when the raptors left the site, I rushed to the den, imagining the worst. And I found the lifeless body of the snake. This is what the Harriers were trying to steal. Nightshade or her mate might have killed it. Bite marks at the snake's head were a dead giveaway. The puppies were safe for now. I scrapped the hide for the evening and decided to lay flat behind the shrub. Considering the height of the foxes, only the portion from my right shoulder to my camera lens was visible. Again, it was time to play wait and watch. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, these pups are too young to know if I am a threat. Of course, if I moved or stood up, this little guy's instinct would send it back home. But for now, it was comfortable. All I was hoping for was that Nightshade gets just as comfortable with me. That's why I let go of the hide. I needed her to get used to me as a peaceful observer and not an intruder. At its shoulder, this pup is just a few inches tall. It's so tiny that it looks lost within its surroundings. This little fella was enjoying its alone time, almost like it waited to see the sunset. Its siblings were most likely asleep. As darkness began to blanket rural India, so did thousands of cranes. They were flying back to their roosting grounds. I haven't seen them flying in such large numbers before. A little movement below caught my attention. Nightshade had returned, slightly earlier than expected. She was definitely more relaxed than the previous day, maybe because she could see me as opposed to knowing there's someone hiding inside a gunny sack. It wasn't right to stay there any longer, so my guide and I decided to leave the foxes by themselves. After visiting the little run of Kutch for more than two months, I was getting closer to the foxes than I've ever been. In the series finale of The Deserts of India, I'll spend even more time with Secret, Imli and Nightshade. As their puppies grow older, we'll witness firsthand how innocence turns into instinct.
and how playful behavior evolves into acts of survival. We'll enter their side of the fence and establish interspecies bonds. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Your support is going to help me build this channel and community and take it a long, long way. I'll see you in the final chapter.